Hi, my name is Kevin Hicks and welcome to my history channel. And today we're commemorating the execution, the death on February the 8th, 1587 of Mary, Queen of Scots, the cousin to Elizabeth I, Queen of England. This, as executions go, you know, they should be quite straightforward. But this one, wow, really sticks out. Now, she was a controversial figure. Yeah. Was she complicit in the murder of her husband, Lord Darnley? Whoa, what a story. But apparently this lady was quite a beauty. And uh, I see in lots of the films about Mary, Queen of Scots, she has a, a broad Scots accent, but I doubt it because she was raised in France. And so I understand would have had a French accent. Anyway, she's supposed to have had this red gold hair. Yeah, and be quite a lady who could twist men round her little finger, as if that could ever happen, yeah? Well, she's been found guilty, treason, and reluctantly, Queen Elizabeth I has signed a death warrant and is going to have her own cousin executed. And there at Fotheringay Castle, she will be executed. The scaffold or the stage is bedecked in black cloth. There is the executioner with his axe and the block is all set. She makes the most dramatic entrance. She's dressed in black. She has her rosary, her ladies in waiting. And then they undo the black outer garment and it drops to the ground. She's dressed in crimson, satin, I understand. Wow, what an entrance. Here she is as this dour religious woman and then the blood of Christ in the colour of her dress. What a statement. And people, you know, spellbound watching this. But then she fumbles at her garment there because it's got to be released. She must be executed in her plain undergarments, I suppose. The executioner apparently steps forward and touches her and she shoes him away. He begs forgiveness for this act. Her ladies in waiting help her and the crimson dress falls to the ground. She steps out of it. She's wearing a full length white shift. She then kneels, says her prayers, and when she is ready, she thrusts out her arms. The axe woof, comes down, but misses the neck. She was heard to gasp. Then another slice with the axe, thump, but it fails. It fails to sever the head, so the executioner takes out his knife, lifts up the head, and literally saws off the head. He then holds it up. God save Queen Elizabeth. But he didn't know that Mary was wearing a wig. It was a secret. Can you imagine that? You're standing there. There's the head dripping with blood. God save, poof, head falls, rolls down the steps. Let's make this a drama. Yeah, you're there with the red wig. You look down, the Queen's head has white hair. It was a secret. She turned white some years before, prematurely. So sad. Oh my gosh. Now, this panicking headsman puts the head onto the crimson cushion, the velvet cushion there, so people can come and see. He replaces the wig. Did he get it on right? I have no idea. But when he moves the body, little did he know, under her dress was her pet dog. It starts to howl. This whole scene, it's a farce. But at the end of the day, it was butchery. What a terrible end. And there's a twist in the tale. Her son becomes King of England. James I of England, sixth of Scotland. He has his mother's body removed from where it was buried and buried in Westminster Abbey, just adjacent Elizabeth I. There they are, cousins, resting in peace. Now, I hope you've enjoyed my little film here. If you have, thumbs up. Let's have some two-way traffic. Any comments, I like to try and answer them if I can, yeah? If you're a subscriber, thanks a million. If you're not, then subscribe and ding that bell. Thank you very much for your time and goodbye.